could run your little mouth all day. That's Mookie, I'm telling you. You laugh every time. There's I no explain. denying that you were crying like a bitch. <laughs> you can run your little mouth all day, but the hand of God just smacked you back into yesterday. <laughs> uh, I hit record on my video recorder so we can talk shit about people crying like a little bitch. I love when you laugh. Aww. I said God smack sings that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people crying like a little bitch. Especially Mookie. <laughs> and people on YouTube. About the lies about you. Oh. It's the Fire Girl Superman fact check file show. Fact check files. Fact check files. Fact check that bitch. Because I'm recording, so I want to know about Linda. I want you to talk about Linda and her lies. Well. What happened there? I don't know the whole story. Okay, so when, you know, Tina and, and Carrie in Texas all kind of separated from Tuna's camp, you know, there was, uh, Linda who, um, we kind of liked, you know, she was always really nice to us. She was also, I think, a mod for Tina at that point in time How or many whatever. accounts does she have? I've seen Linda Loco, Linda something or other. I've seen a few Linda accounts. Linda Santana, Linda La Loca, Chula something or other. Oh, okay. But, you know, she, she just, she's like one of those you know, grandmotherly type of people. You think she really cares. You know, she acts like she really cares about people. So and that's she, how she slips under your guard. Yeah. She gets, under, past, yeah. She, she gets past your guard. And we would talk at night and, you know, we thought like, um, she would tell us about her personal life, her private life. And we would talk about being moms and, and grocery shopping or, you know, medications or whatever. We just like, you know, had that where it wasn't just we talked about YouTube stuff, but she'd always want to talk about YouTube stuff and Tina. And at this time, she told us she despised Tina. So she had gained your trust. Right. She gained our trust, and she said that, you know, Tina had called her, uh, had kind of doxed the fact that her son was a cop and said, you know, and, and supposedly, which I don't think Tina ever called the man a pig, but she claimed that that's what Tina said. And this was where her hate for Tina came in. Because the the normal all pig had, bacon thing for a cop. Right, right. You know, okay. Well, we had all had our own grievances with Tina at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, Tina was running her mouth the brig saying that, you know, Texas was a shitty, or Carrie was a shitty mom and a drug dealer. And that, if like, if you know Carrie, that is the farthest thing from the truth at all. Like, she had had the major back surgery and was on a medication for like a short amount of time. Yeah, I stood up for Carrie on that. And yeah. Remember I was saying that nobody would believe that, Carrie. Well, nobody believes it. I don't see how Ca Carrie can't even like, Carrie's just a very nice passive person. Like I can't even see her like even attempting to try to sell dope. Like she'd be <laughs> the kind of person that would like get killed or hit over the head and robbed. Like she just doesn't have that, that street Hey, I, I learned something in the Stevie Nabry case, making a murder. Wisconsin has the highest uh, income. Killer? No, highest income from Department of Corrections. Right They're like second to the, to the Wisconsin itself is making money. But anyways, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. So we, you know, we would talk to Linda and stuff and, and she seemed very concerned that, you know, like Carrie in Texas might make up with Tina. She's like, don't ever go back over there. And she would tell us stuff that Tina had said about us to try to keep that feud and that, that distance between them. You keep because a wedge was, driven yeah, between because everybody. She was low key playing Tina. We knew from the very beginning that Linda was going after Tina that she had plans. She had one point told me that she tried to sell her information to Roasted. And, you know, this was this was even before I think the gin stuff came up. 
like she had planned from the very beginning to take Tina down, you know, and, and then, you know, she had mentioned to us about selling the info to Isaac or whatever. And then, you know, we see how that happened. She ended up having voice clips and, you know, was basically baiting Tina to get the information that she wanted. Mm -hmm. But she had recorded me one day on the phone. Like we were all talking and, you know, just bullshitting around. And then I hear my voice play back word for word what I just said. And after that, I was like, you know what? I, I don't trust this person no more. I don't want to fuck with yeah, her no more. Either. I was just like, okay, that that's it. Like, you know, we, we, I removed myself out of the group that she was in. We no longer had phone conversations after that. Okay. Is that the last you talked to her besides, you know, like recently? Cussing her or, out? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you just cut it off. And that's what I would have done too. Was when I figured out somebody's being shady, I cut it off. But then also some, some personal shit about you was leaked. And Tina's been saying some shit. Now, I'll, I'll say this. I remember a year ago when Tina was telling you, oh, your kids are great. I love little Jeff and your daughter is wonderful. Talking about my kids. Yeah. You yeah. know, so she doesn't know who your children are or anything. So... No. I'm just I'm just making a point the indiscrepancies. A year ago, my kids were your kids. Right. Yeah, but right, now right. there's a different story saying you don't you got your kids taken away, which never happened. Yeah, my kids have never yeah. been taken away. I, from I wouldn't me, want to ever. tell the whole story and I and I think somebody has twisted this and I know the truth. The the CPS people have never came to Jamie and taken her kids away. That's not that's not the case. You have a you have someone taking care of your kids because you were in the hospital. And then your ex had something to do with it and got some trouble. And it come to wind out where now your sister-in-law has um, joint custody. You still have custody and full parental rights over right. your children. There, nothing has been said about you to take your kids away. Nothing bad. I've read all the paperwork. And I'm just, I just want to set this straight because I've heard this out there about Jamie getting her kids taken away and don't have her kids. No, that's not the case. What yeah, happened. I was not a junkie okay. fed mom. She was in the hospital. You need to tell a little bit. Of, you need to tell a little bit of story. What what Mookie did to you, and, and why you're here, where you're at right now. You know, because now you don't have a home. You really don't have. A, you don't have a home to, to take care of your kids because he took that from me. Yeah. Well, I was. You know. You know that I was married to Mookie for ten years. We were together for fourteen years. Yeah, and I still and I still know Mookie. I talked to Mookie, and it's bullshit. And he told me two weeks before that happened, and I didn't know you at this point. That he was going to leave you and take right. you to the hospital and drop you off. Well, see, and what happened was he met, you know, he met that little thought from work. Yeah. And, you know, um, she didn't have custody of her kids. Like, she was kind of transient. Yeah, I, I knew her, too. And, she, yeah, she did not have custody of her kids. She was from Montgomery, Alabama. And, you know, she was 23. My husband's 36. And, you know, she, like, wanted to get into a relationship with him, but she needed a home to live in to where she could get custody back of her children. So they hatched this plan um, to get me committed into a hospital. Yeah. And, you know, at this time I had no idea that he was cheating on me. I had no idea that, you know, he had wanted to be... Like, in a relationship with somebody else. Because he had just bought you rings, yeah, correct? He had just bought you. Six months before that, he bought me a brand new wedding ring set to replace my old one. You know, but when, like, um, about two years before, you know, I was attacked by an ex-boyfriend. And I suffered PTSD from it. And I was having a really hard time when my husband... On top of the BPD, which is uh, borderline personality disorder. Right. And now PTSD as well. And anxiety issues. And anxiety issues. Yeah, I have borderline personality disorder, insomnia, anxiety issues. Yeah, there's times at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning I can message Jamie and she's still up. Right. You know, she doesn't sleep. So these are the reasons why you were taken to the hospital to get some help. Because the PTSD, I was suffering really bad from it. Like, I, I don't feel safe. I, I can't, you know, be around a bunch of strangers. You know, and we had just moved into a really bad neighborhood where, oh, like, yeah, right around the corner yeah. from my house, somebody was shot, and my husband was working graveyard shift. So at night, I would be, like, panicked to death, thinking somebody's going to come hurt me or come hurt my children, and I wasn't sleeping. Because you're an abuse survivor. Because I'm, yeah, from the, from the attack. So it just makes me feel like I'm never safe. Yeah. And, you know, my husband's seen me suffering, and... 
you know, he, he talked to, he was like, you know what, you know, we need to put you inpatient. That way you can be healthy for the family. But for a for year kids. prior to that, he was telling you no, right? That he didn't have time, but all of a sudden right, it became the right time. Yeah, because I had told my husband a year before that, that I was having a hard time with, you know, the reoccurring nightmares, the never feeling safe. And he's like, well, we can't do anything about that right now because I just switched jobs and I can't take the time off. Because when you go inpatient, you don't know how long you're going to be in there. Yeah, And, sure. you know, it's it's... It's to get healthy, but I was just having a lot of struggling going on. And I thought that he had my best interests at heart and that he was doing this to, you know, help me in the family. But no, he was moving his girlfriend in while you were in the hospital. The same night that I got committed to the hospital, he moved the thought into our home. I remember talking to my children a couple days later and they were trying to tell me about this girl and he snatched the phone away from them and then wouldn't let me talk to my children anymore. And I'm the kind of mother, like, my kids never had babysitters. I never left my kids. I wouldn't go, like, out drinking at the bars. Like, I took very, very good care of my children. And yeah. and that's just the type of mother that I am. Oh, I know that. I can already see that in you. That By the time I've known you, you wouldn't, yeah, that's just not you. Your and, kids come first. That's yeah, your and, first priority. And I didn't work in the marriage. Like, I took care of the kids and took care of the household. Um, I had two <laughs> sons that have autism. So it was a full-time job taking yeah, care of my children. and he makes decent money. I knew how much yeah, money he, he was making. Yeah, he made decent money, so I, I didn't work. But I had also applied for, you know, disability based on my mental stuff. And then when, you know, he, he goes and he, he has me committed into the hospital. Moves girl in the moves house. Moves girl in the house the same night. Three days after that is when I find out about her, because I'd never even had an inkling of any of this going on. Yeah. And then a few days after that, um, CPS comes and talks to me. And yeah, because what had happened, the kids had got out of the house in the middle of the night and were running around well, the middle of the street. that was the second night that CPS got called on him. The first yeah. night it was... CPS was called on him. You were in the hospital, could, yeah. weren't even in the picture. What Could not go. I could not just sign myself out of the hospital. Like I was stuck. Yeah, if you're there. when you're inpatient, you can't get out. You, I mean, remember we were talking with Tasha that night about it, and she was like, "Yeah, you just can't go. You know, you're you're guarded." And even if you try to get out, they can still get a court order to keep you in there if they don't feel that you're you're ready to to get out. Yeah. And when CP or yeah CPS gets called the first night, I forgot the reasoning behind why it was called. Maybe i forget but it ended up happening cps was called on him two days in a row yeah so when i left the house my husband i had had baby gates up in all of the rooms like my my house was pretty much completely child proof because when you have children that have autism you have to worry about them wandering or getting out so i had my house completely set up to where my kids could not just walk out the front door and they must have taken all that stuff down when she yeah, moved in because have. she moved the dog in too, remember? The, yeah, there the was big a, dog. some other dog. And I guess the dog had gotten out in the middle of the night and they found my children wandering in the street around midnight. And that was like my biggest fear in life because when you do have children that are autism, that's one of those things that scares the shit out yeah, of you. That happened not too long ago where I work. Remember the yes. kid got out and got and, on the beach and he drowned? Right. Within, they found him within dead. Within a 30-minute period, he just slips away from from his parents and, and ended up drowning dead. But yeah. anyways, well, What happened with, with, with him falling asleep and they were in the middle of the road? I remember that. So the cops come and they're like, you know, they they're like, okay, well, we, we, we have to take your kids. You know, th- this is too much. So they call my, my, my sister. Yeah, who lives in Alabama. In Alabama. And she watches the kids for about a week. Yeah. And at this time, I'm still, like, fighting to get out of the hospital. Yeah, you're still in the hospital. And, um, you know, my, my counselors, my therapists were just like, no, you know, with all this going on. Because you got to think. It wouldn't have been safe for you to get out anyways. It really would not have been. You and, needed. Yeah, anyway. And plus, I had been with this man for 14 years. So I'm within a couple days finding out my marriage is over. You moved some, the girl in. Some thought that I've never met has moved into my bed. And now my children are being taken yeah. away. So they weren't going to let me out. They weren't being taken away. They, your sister had well, them. They weren't taken, taken away a, from my husband. Yeah. So... So they never actually stepped in with a parenting plan and all that bull crap. Because, I mean, when they're taken away, that's a whole different no, scenario. No, because They can said either you can do. go this way out or you can go to your sister's and it'll be cool. Right. You know, so they went... And now they're they're with the, his sister, in which they y'all have done is not... They haven't been taken away. You've actually... 
she has par she has full custody, but she piggybacked on yours. I can't remember what they call. It. I read concurrent the concurrent custody. Concurrent, yeah, because uh, and that's a big word a lot of people don't understand. Concurrent, but yeah, she she just you have your parental rights. You still have custody. You can go get them kids right now if you want to without a problem, and she can't stop you. But and, when and then, what Mookie did, he left you with that. when she got out of the hospital. She you didn't have a home. Yes. And you still don't really, you're, you're kind of, you have a home, but you're, it's not a home where you can bring your kids to. When I got out of the hospital, he, they, I was in there for close to a month. And what they did was they changed the thoughts address to my home ad address, like probably the day that she moved in. Yeah, because, once she gets one piece of mail, you can't yeah, kick somebody out. Yeah, you can't out. just kick somebody out. You have to have them evicted. Yeah. So when I come out of the hospital they've they've lost my children, her children, and they're now living in my house. Yeah, and she had already lost her children already before, like two or three times. Cause I, yeah, I knew two it. or three times. So I come out of the hospital, and I have nothing. I have no home. I no have income, no, no, no income, money. nothing. My husband did not give me a dollar. He did not care if I lived or died. He didn't care if you if lived I on the street. If I had street. food. If I was living on the And he's street, still he like care. that to this day because, I mean, yeah, I've, I've talked to him when you messaged him. And I've talked to him myself and I'm like, hey, man, she needs a few dollars for some help. I'm broke. You know, could you like, because I know you got how much you showed me your bank account the other day because he brags about this shit. You know, and then he doesn't even send money to his own kids. He doesn't even send Christmas to his own kids. Who sent your kids Christmas? You did. So he'll tell everybody he does, but no, I did. But that's the main point with the, you not having your kids. I want right. I want to make that clear. You never had your kids taken away never, at all. Never, never had a CPS call. Never had a teacher say anything. I was a great mother to my children, but it just was very it, difficult it was a, for me. It's, a, it's just a, it's a weird situation where somebody you were in the hospital and he got them taken away, and but they're still a family, so they're not really technically taken away. Y'all still both have full custody. Yeah, nobody has. You even got full paperwork the other kids, day about. Yeah. You know, child support or something because you still have full custody. Yeah. You, you still have, you have, you know, that's still, if you have full custody, you still have some. And I still take part in all of my kids' things. I, I, I call them all the time. You know, it, it just, I don't have a home or an income to be able to have them with me. Yeah. Right and he, ha he has a home he's buying. But he hasn't put air conditioning in the home or nothing like that. He It's not even prepared for the children. Yeah, Mookie ended up getting evicted from from the house, and I ended up losing everything. Because he All... told you if you came back, he was leaving. Yeah. He was not going to. If you came to the home to live, he was going and leave you right. with all the bills he, and no money and no nothing. He sold my flat. I had two huge flat screen TVs. Oh, he pawned all that shit. Laptops, he pawned it. Washer and dryer. I mean, everything that you think that you have in a home to take care of yourself and have. I've lost everything. And here's the surprise ending. Miss Little Thought got her a car and left. Once he bought her a car, she was gone. That's yeah, all she, she didn't wanted. Water to be, she never wanted him in the first place. So he, he ended up destroying our family. Oh, she tried destroying mine. Remember that night she about the green shoes yeah. on Facebook? Yeah, I remember And there was that. all kind of crazy shit that rumors brought up over that. Right. And uh, But I just want to clear up that story because Linda has, has a really went out there and said some things that really isn't true. And some people have made... And well, Tina has said some things that aren't true, too. When Tina, you know, because I heard the voice clip that they tried to send me, like, oh, Linda's innocent. You know, Tina said, well, when somebody asked me about, or what did she say? Well, Jamie, Jamie said some shit about my kid. So I said, well, what the fuck happened to her kids? I've never said anything ever. But a year about ago, your, my kids were your kids, and she was commenting on my kids' videos, which I right. don't mind. My kids love. The other day, my, my, I had to wear headphones with Tina if I'm watching Tina. Because her language, but my son loves it, and if he hears Tina, he's like, "Is that Tina?" And he was answering questions Tina was yelling out. I've actually <laughs> defended Tina at times and defended her child, but the thing is, is I don't need a medal for it. I don't need to go put it on Twitter. I, do I don't what like I shade like being thrown right. on you. That's what You're, I about right. your kids being taken away. Your kids have never been taken away. You still have full custody. You just, your just old man left you with nothing. No home, no money. And then no, I got not badly crap. injured right after that. Oh, that's right. You went and I broke. shattered my arm. Yeah, you fell down and you broke and you, I mean, shattered her arm. I've I mean, had two surgeries. Is, have to get two more. It wasn't one of them hairline fractures. It was straight broke. And the doctor said he had to pour peroxide down your, into the bone. To make sure that it didn't get infected. Yeah, because it and was just, last time it didn't set. Yeah, so, so I'm going to end up getting either an elbow fusion, fusion or an elbow replacement. But that's what I like, the shade about your kids taking away. Because a lot of parents, you know, if your kid's been taken away, it, it, it puts a bad shade on you like you're a bad parent. But that's never happened to you, but they're, that's the way they're spinning never. it. 
you know, and I know this and you know this, because but nobody else, because we never really actually come out and talked about it to right. anyone. We said, this is our personal business and we do keep our lives kind of private. You know what I'm saying? Well, I just feel like if you, like, you know, Tina puts all of her business out there. She puts her kid on YouTube. You know, it, in a way, it's almost like fair game. I've never talked about my private life, my children, anything because well, I, it is such part of a it, hurtful thing I would, I would know it would try to be spin that way because I've seen other things people have said on in a different camps where, right. you know, they try to say you're a drug user or a drug, you know, you're into drugs. And you do take medication that's prescribed, and to me, that's not a druggie or a drunkie or anything like that. And actually, if you're not from the United States of America, you have not realized that 90% of the drug problem we have in America today are opioid addicts from pharmaceutical companies, from right. doctors prescribing it from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, where they were just handing that shit out like candy. And I don't even, even when I was prescribed it, because remember, I shattered my arm, I didn't even take the medication yeah, they, because whenever it was I'm too it, strong for me. Whenever it I me take sick. it, yeah, whenever I take any opioid like that, that, you know, that what normal people buy and the sell. strongest painkiller i take is it makes me nauseous. 800 yeah me too and it made me nauseous whenever i get a prescription for lower taps I, I usually never take them i'll put them up for like if i need them for something else or right you know i just whatever i need to do but they just make me but sick the whole thing with with my kid it's such a hurtful thing because you got to imagine like here i am struggling with ptsd from an attack the worst and the worst thing they could say to you now now is why did your husband leave you and for another woman that's the worst thing they could do you know yeah i mean yeah i mean if you might as well head that straight on right now because that's the next spin they're doing you know and i'd rather you know have to spin right now and 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 i all actually he he is almost like a creeper he he kind of creeps me out but he's chasing another 18 year old right now and there was another 18-year-old Hooker Barbie that we called her Hooker that Barbie. wrecked his van that he was hanging around with. He I've just tried a to middle-age be crisis type bullshit. A good wife and a good mother, and I was loyal to this man. I never cheated on this man. You know, I tried to do the best that I could. But like I said, when I, you know, started struggling with the PTSD, it really affected our marriage. You know, because I, I had, you know, all this anxiety that I never had before. I would go out in public and have panic attacks. I wasn't sleeping because I was afraid of the neighborhood I lived in. And just to, like, have my husband just treat me with no dignity. Like, this is the woman that gave him children. This is somebody that rolled for him the for The only woman, because ain't no one other woman giving him children. I guarantee him to you that so right now. So for him to treat me like such a, a like, piece of shit was very hurtful to me. I mean, well, very it, it, hurtful. And it, and it is tough because, I mean, in the time I've known you, I've had to deal with the PTSD and the anxiety. And there's been times where in this, we're sitting on her front porch right now where, well, there's a few times I got upset and I was kind of yelling, you know, not at you, but I was yelling about situations and you start getting anxiety and I have to learn to control that. So you're okay and you know I'm safe and I'm comfortable, you know, so I can never, you know, I, I have to talk to you. I can't, you know, get irate and go off. I remember yeah. there's just, when I first got my PTSD diagnosis, I was like, I didn't go to war. Like, I thought this was somebody that, you know, people got PTSD from being in well, war. Well, so and seeing I, I, if you want to tell the audience, our fans, our audience, <laughs> of, about, you know, what actually, I mean, because you've told me one or two things that have been done to you, and you might want to tell them. So if you think some shit you're saying to Jamie online is going to affect her, and make her scared, I, I don't think you're going to be able to do it because some of the shit you have told me right. that men have done to you, well, especially with the AK-47. Yeah, I had a gun to my head. I had a, How many times know, have you had a gun? Because some of them were, were Marines and they owned bars here locally. Like three. Three guns held to your head, a knife to your throat. Yeah, and the the last attack was, it was such an innocent night. So I wanted to have a girls' night. I hadn't been out in years and years. I had kids. I had a little bit of money, and I wanted to have a girls' night. Well, I don't want anybody to get, like, DUIs or get caught drinking and driving, so we picked a bar that had, like, a like a, a motel in the parking lot. So we would just have to go from, like, was the... Was it Coconuts? No, it was Boomers. Okay, I know where Boomers Yeah, I know where Boomers So, that. you know, I set it up that way, so that way we could all just crash together and nobody would have to, like, drive home drunk. Mm-hmm. So we were, you know, we were at the bar and we're having a good time. My ex-boyfriend was there and showed up. 
and he was somebody that I had dated like many years ago, and he was abusive when we were dating. Was but the same was guy like, we seen in the gas station the other yes, day? Yes, the one okay. that I hid from. Yeah, because yeah, we ran into one of our exes at, the, at a gas station one day. Because I was, was like 17 when I dated him, and, and you know, this was, I was probably 34, 35 at this point in time. So we're having a great time, and, and you know, uh, we had invited him back to the room, and it ended up being me, this other girl, and him. And he just, like, flipped the fuck out on me for no reason, like, flies across the room, and he's, like, literally choking me. Like, I felt like I was fighting for my life. And I got him off me. I kicked him the fuck out. I was really pissed. And, um, you know, the, the next day, I was just, I was, like, traumatized over it. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't let myself be the victim. I didn't let him beat me up. You know, I got him off me, but it just really traumatized me. So I start texting him. And he's apologizing. So I got this motherfucker to admit in text messages that he did all these things to me. And I thought, well, well, you know, that's evidence right there. You know, yeah. I'll just take my phone, show the police. Well, I ended up going to the biggest douchebag dick face cop in, in Penis Cola. Yeah. And tell him about it. And he kept thinking or trying to insinuate that I was like some kind of prostitute. Like he couldn't figure out why I would have a motel room in the parking lot of a bar and i'm just you don't like, want a dui exactly it made perfect sense to me and because I, cops here are really have so the cops really end are. up not doing shit about it which made me kind of feel victimized all over i keep reading the text messages like was this an attack like did this happen to me like why why is nobody doing anything about this and and it was so hurtful but after that i just started having these horrible panic attacks in public i never feel safe it, it, it's it's been hell and it, it was hard on my family and you know yeah. it just i i well, needed there's help. more than one one account that caused that ptsd i think because well, like right. you said three guns to your head a knife to your throat and a few other I little things i think that was just the final straw yeah you know and, and so it's, if y'all think y'all saying some shit on to jamie online and you think it affects her she, it really doesn't scare her. no i had a stalker yeah. before too stalk yeah and there was bit. there was that one guy that kept messaging you that would and then his wife started messaging you oh yeah that one too. every time he broke up his I wife she he would message the craziest you. motherfuckers i am a beacon it's like uh then you've lost a few of your friends recently too my best friend from high school was um his name was jeff also but uh Sorry, James. No. James, Jeff. No, no, that's not what I was. No. My name's Jeff, and everybody knows it. We know Edward Hubbard tried to say, My name's James Carney. And Edward Hubbard actually made a video, and if you remember this video, he said Tina gave him all the information. So when Tina says she's never doxed anyone, I mean. Oh my God, she doxed somebody <laughs> two days ago. But I always wanted to clear the air. That's get, we're getting way, really deep. You know, I hate to give people, I don't like giving people more ammo. I don't like giving explanations. I think sometimes Grizz over -explana ex explanations things that he doesn't need to explain. So my best friend from high school, he was going to, I was going to go and move to Wisconsin to be with him. Like we, we were really good friends. We were high school sweethearts. We were engaged to be married at one point in time. And I was like, you know, this is going to be the type of solid relationship I need to try to get, you know, a home, my kids um, back with me. And um, he had had been prescribed Oxycontins for a horrible back injury he had. And something happened with um, his insurance. And he ended up not being able to get his medications anymore. And he Obamacare. went and tried um, street heroin for the very first time. And that's the problem with the opioid epi epidemic. Everybody tries to self-medicate when they can't get the opioid. Op 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 opioids. 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 They were prescribed for because anybody watched Fox News Channel, there was a big deal in the past few months about opioid epidemic. So he ends up, you know, um, dying. And, and I was just crushed. I was just like, God, I cannot handle anything else. Yeah, I remember that day. And an uh, old friend of mine from high school, because I had, you know, I, I knew a lot of his friends, so I kind of ended up having to spread the news, like, hey, you know, Jeff's dead, Jeff died, and she's like, well, come out and drink with me, or come out, you know, let's drink one in honor for our friend, and I don't know what happened. All I remember is I woke up in the hospital, and my arm was completely shattered. Yeah. And now I'm lost my friend, 
I lost my house. I've lost all my belongings. I lost my marriage. You lost a, another friend not too long ago, too. Yeah, my So friend. that really affects you. When you pull off of YouTube, it's not because of anything going on on YouTube. It's because you, 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 you lost some people that you love and you, you're going through a rough time. A guy that I was friends with from like five years old, mm -hmm. you know, committed suicide. And, you know, suicide is just something that really speaks to my heart. And it just, it just tore me up, you know. Um, you know, some people don't realize, and even I do forget sometimes that how rough you do have it. You know, I really do. And I want, I really mainly just want to clear up about your kids being taken away because that's never happened. And I, and I think sometimes you, you may say that, you know, and when you're talking to somebody, yeah, my kids, you know, if you're talking about personal conversation, my kids were taken away. You, they weren't taken away from you. You had nothing to do. You were outside that equation that had, I mean. You know what and, it is? I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I come off so strong on YouTube. And, you know, the reason that I don't talk about certain things as much is because, you know, there's such a stigma on being crazy or having, like, you know, bipolar disorder or BPD or whatever. It means that just about any point or opinion I have is not valid anymore because I'm the crazy bitch. Yeah. You know, and that's why I don't, I don't like to play victim cards. So I don't sit here and say, oh, well, I can go and do and say whatever the fuck I want to on YouTube, but I'm crazy, so it's allowed. Yeah. You know, I want my opinions to speak for themselves and people not be like, oh, well, she don't know what the fuck she's talking about. She's fucking crazy. So we want to do some videos together because nobody ever hears what we say. I mean, because we are normally in the chat and it's so easy for somebody to block you or, or time you out. And sometimes, you know, even the same with text messages, when you're text messaging somebody back and forth, some emphasis don't come through. You know what I'm saying? You can sound some, right. read some text that make you sound like a dick, but you're not being a dick. And if you were actually speaking the words, it would be a different... Right. Well, text doesn't really con convey emotion very well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When you're in a chat, when me and you are in chats and we're talking in chats, that doesn't convey none of that. And we don't get, you can't get every single point out. Because there's been times I'm trying to get points out and, and it, nobody's blocking me. It's just timing out because I've typed so many messages in the freaking chat. Right. You know, and me and you have barely done any videos and i've told our fans that we want to do some videos just talking because sometimes me and jamie just sit here and we talk and we laugh and sometimes if y'all are part of that y'all would understand a little bit more and you know and the drives like the whole drive to new orleans that was a fun drive i mean and get to know our our personalities and and stuff a little better you know and, and it's not always about who's feuding with who on youtube and you know, who said what about who? I just hate but, it when somebody spends some shit that ain't well, really true. it's like true. that whole recording thing. Like, th this is my thing. This lady tried from the very beginning. Like, she, she acted like she was real friends with people. She would she would call them on the phone. So you're not the only so one she personal. stabbed in the back No, either. she fucked a lot of people over. And, like, I know that she's, like, you know, I don't know what Isaac said to her to make her feel justified in what she was doing with this whole Jen thing. But that bitch from the beginning was out to record people and fuck them over. You know, she was, she, it, to me, that's just despicable. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just was just floored by yeah, that. Yeah, when that was, and that, that's a really an evil person who's, whose first agenda is to, to record people and to take anybody down she can. And that's what it sounds like. She's, she's she playing so many different fields. She has her hand in so many people's Kool-Aid. I mean, she was everywhere. This lady spilling everybody's tea. Spilling. There, there's a few other. There's a few everybody. others that, that slip by that I think are doing that too, and you you know one or two of them that I think are, but I'll never. I'm not speaking out on none of that. There's a few others who try. But I'll tell you what, I did kind of know. I found out that there was a plan to try to prove that that Albert was not Tina's, and I had no fucking part of that. And I, as a matter of fact, um said that that was the most despicable thing that I'd ever heard, that her children should be off limits, and, and that wouldn't be the right thing to do, because supposing Albert isn't hers, that's, for one, nobody's fucking business. Yes, yes nobody's business two, at all. And two, you know, that kid is going to see that shit one day. Yeah. And that don't, you don't and it need doesn't to matter mess with somebody's... It doesn't matter if it is hers or not hers, because she's, she's his mama no matter no what. No matter what. That's, and when that, I found out that Linda was trying to do that, I was like, that is the most fucked up thing. And this is, you got to understand, this is when I'm in a, in a very heated battle with Tuna. Can't stand her ass. But when it comes to her child, I would stick up for him. But when it came to my children, Tina did not give two yeah. fucks. 
two fox. Somebody came to me one day and asked me if Jeff was mine and said it thought he was mixed. Really? <laughs> yeah, because of his dark complexion. Well, my dad's the same way. It's a Native American blood skin comes out in certain types. Like you, yeah. your ginger comes out. My you ginger. You know, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know about you. I also I have a little Cherokee Indian in me, too. Yeah, me, I got some Indian. I know my grandparents were full-blooded, so a certain part, my, my one brother is darker skin than my other two brothers. And then my son is darker skin than the other ones. You know, so it comes out in certain, in certain attributes, you know, and somebody thought he was mixed. And I was like, no, he's my son, and he's not mixed. He's just, you know, he's that Native American came out in, the, in that, that gene pool at that time. Just like my dad is like that. He is dark complected, you know. And I looked at some pictures of my grandpa, and my grandpa looks really dark, you know, but he's Native American dark. And I remember my my cousin telling me he yeah, seen me he, he seen me he seen really. him eating acorns and stuff and thought it was weird, but that's what Native Americans mm -hmm. do. They it's eat true. acorns. And um but I'm I'm about we're in thirty something minutes, forty five, thirty five. I wanted to clear up the whole you getting your kids. I, I, I don't wanna I hate hearing that crap and I hate somebody to spin it and use try to use it against you when it's not the truth. I hate somebody trying to represent something like that and it's not really the truth. And it's I mean, okay right now because it's been long enough to where I can actually. There's speak a hairline or something to it. Crying my eyes out. I mean, because this. Yeah, is there are some days when you talk thing. about your kids that you know, and you know it's the day to talk to your kids. You even get nervous about that, and you have a hard time. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and you know, those are days when I'm like, okay, I know today is this day, and I, you know, I'm not going to say anything negative to nobody because I don't want you getting upset and not being able to make the phone call. Because some things with the BPD, some things you can't control it, and it'll flip. Well, BPD is very difficult because you it's so hard to control your emotions and you know as that one girl said she would just cry out of nowhere for like hours for hours sometimes you know up to two days i mean you know bpd is a struggle and i would love to share that more in videos um because i'm very knowledgeable on it yeah yeah and i think it's mistaken a lot of people is like the uh fibromyalgia they, they don't believe that's real Right. There's a few diseases out there who people just like just blow off like it's not even there. And autism was that way for a long time. Well, the BPD you know? is there, but for a long time it was considered untreatable, and a lot of even therapists wouldn't want to touch it. Yeah, I don't think they were just trained. Didn't that documentary I watched say that there was some problems with training too? Like they mm -hmm. didn't know about it. You know? Yeah, it's one of the most misunderstood. Uh, because I, I remember the Major air around AIDS and HIV in the early 80s. It was so misunderstood. You know, nobody knew what to do about it. They just thought it was some sort of, like, I don't know, like some sort of flu type thing or something. They didn't know. They had no clue what to do about so, it. Yeah, so right now in my life, I'm, I'm working hard trying to wait for my disability hearing. And it's very tough on me because I can't, you know, yeah, you I can't have, just go you to have a lawyers, job. You have lawyers. Right? You have lawyers. You have lawyers in Tennessee where your sister, where your sister in law is at for your kids. Your kids have lawyers. Right. You know, you've taken care of, make sure all that has happened, make sure everything's protected. Because now you have to protect him. If, the, if he were to come get him and take him back to this house, he has no AC and he can't take care of these children by himself. That is my biggest fear that he's going to try to get them back so he doesn't have to be financially responsible with paying child and, support. And I, and I tell you right now, I know this man and he's not capable of taking care of five no. children. You have five children. Yeah. You have five children, and he is not capable. He's more worried about what he's where he's sticking his dick at night. Pussy. Yeah, and um, thoughts. I mean, because before I met Jamie, I remember him coming to me and saying, some, "I mentioned Walking Dead one day," and he was like, "But she won't let me watch Walking Dead." And I'm like, "Are you a fucking little bitch? You can go <laughs> watch it." And come to find out, that wasn't the case. She's like, "Just don't watch it in front of the kids." You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he twisted even you. He made you sound like. You were 400 oh, pounds overweight. You yeah, were in bed. When, you never got out of bed. And knowing you, that is not the case of the picture. When you met me, how shocked were you? I was, I was very, I'm still very shocked because, and he even told another friend of mine at the other depot that we work at because we worked all over the place. And the one depot isn't there no more on Brent Lane. But the one girl had told me, he said, no, he said that his wife was disabled and blind and all kind of other shit, you know, and made you sound like a, this horrible person to everybody that he talked to that had never met you. And you I know? think that's probably why you kind of fell for me at first, was yeah. because you were just Well, at first off. I was worried about, you know, you hurting yourself, really. I was like, this happened to you. He, and I knew beforehand, I knew what he was going to do. And if I would have known beforehand, I would have told you. Because he told me two weeks, and I, because I was, we was out back, 
And I walked out the back door, and he said, I'm going to leave my wife. And then I knew he was with that thought because she worked around us, too, in the, in the office. And I knew it was her. And then I, I, I knew what he was planning on. I'm like, good luck with that, you dumb motherfucker, and walked away. Right. And Well, I'm going to go ahead and say this, too. Like, that first year was such hell on me. <clears throat> I mean, I lost everything that I had. You know, he, uh, he took everything from me. And the only thing I had left Even like was your my cell phone. cell phone. You didn't have no He took that away, too. And then he took that away. And then... When I, and I bought you another one. And I said, here, put this in your name. And we'll take care of the bill somehow. But before that happened... Yeah. I, I had a relapse. I tried to kill myself. I was just down and out. And I just lost, lost it. And I ended up back in the hospital. Yeah, I remember that too. And that was but really hard. I, I and I want this lesson for everybody, all the people listening, all the audience, you especially females. I gave you that phone and I said, "Listen, here's and I bought you a starter kit and everything, a new SIM card, and I said, put it in your name and we'll figure out how to take care of the bill. Because any even if we're, me and you weren't together, I said, do not rely on a man ever again. Ever again. It's gonna it's gonna be in your name and something you control. Don't let it, no man ever control you where he's rely you. He, he can shut off your cell phone. See, even our away. bank account was in his name. Yeah. Like, I didn't even have my name on it, but we never had an issue with me ever having money. Like, I yeah. would just use the debit well, then card. Your, your phone broke a couple weeks ago, and I went and bought you another one. Right. Because you can't not have a phone. When you have kids, you have to have a phone. I have to have my phone. I went out at 4 o'clock in the morning, right. you know, and little Jeff was like, no, we got to get her a phone. Jeff found out her phone was broken. He had, he had to make sure she got a phone, and we went and bought the phone. You know, and I don't, want, and it's not a point of relying on a man, but you need to. Yeah, I always want well, to make that point clear to, to women or anybody in, a, in any relationship. Don't be relying on that one person because it can be taken away so fucking fast. You know, yeah, like well, he did with your phone. He just shut that. He just went online and shut spite, it off. And then not only he just said it was had stolen, it that, so I couldn't even get it turned back on. Yeah, we tried. So at that point, I feel like he is this motherfucker has taken everything from me. Yeah. And that was that was a tough week when your point. phone was yeah when your phone was shut off that was that was a hard week yeah it, that it, was for you and I was basically living on friends couches and couch hopping and had no permanent place to go I mean it was just I just felt completely broken at that point like I yeah. just mentally tapped out it was like I had been through too much and right now you're living in a home you grew up in but it's also in a, in a difficult situation where you can't have your kids it's not big enough it's, this house isn't big enough. No, it's not. Yeah. And, and you know, I want to be able to be financially dependent on myself yeah. and not have a, you know. That's why you're trying to get a disability. This disability. And it's a problem when you're trying to get a disability because you can't just go get a job. Right. And you're waiting on these lawyers and they switched over your lawyers. So it's kind of, your one yeah, lawyer quit you or got see me fired. GoFundMes or victim cards being played or e begging. You know, most yeah. of these people have no idea how fucking hard I struggle. Oh, yeah. You, cause, they I mean, have no clue. Jamie having twenty dollars in her hand is is more meaningful than anything, you know. And when I have extra money, I try to give her some money. And, and there's been times I've given her just five dollars, and she says, "What's this for?" And I'm like, "You just have, to you have, have no cash. cash." Yeah. It was the one day I was sleeping, and you and you didn't have a ride. And there was times where I've cried over that. Like it's it's humbled me. Yeah. Like I was the kind of girl that had my nails done, pedicures, and. And make up subscription boxes. So for and the dummy Mookie is, he he did make decent money. I mean, he really did. He did. But he was labor intensive. He's labor intensive in what he does. And he works a lot of hours to get that money, too. And uh, he doesn't work smart. He just works hard. And I took you know. great care of my children in the house. So it was like, you know, my kids were well provided for. I always made sure their needs were met first. And I just, money was something I never thought would be held over my head. Or taken and it is from to this me. day. I was, you know, I'm surprised when he, you know, there those times when he did give you a few dollars, and I was like, wow. People don't understand. Just getting my prescriptions filled every month. Oh yeah, that's a big deal. Is yeah. like, or it, just getting it, a ride to go get to the go ones. Get them. Yeah, I mean, because it's so nerve wracking. I'm sure anybody who lives in the city understands. You know, you you can't just go over to the other side of town. You know, right, it's and not, I had my license taken. Like people don't, you know, when I was 22, I got diagnosed with something called iritis. And I'm almost completely blind in my right eye, and I have. Well, that's how he was able to eye. shade you and say you were blind. blind. I mean, you know, most people. Well, with your broken know. arm too, I mean, I wasn't sure. You know. You know, I don't know. It'd be tough for you to drive. Right. 
Yeah, well, I don't have peripheral vision. Like, if I'm staring straight, I can't see if something's going to run out in front of me. Oh, okay. You that, know what that, I'm that does make, yeah, that makes it really hard. And, and that's just been, you know, I, I've had it rough in life, but I've never, like, uh, begged for money or, or cried. Oh, yeah, or, I've noticed that. You don't beg for money from nobody, you know, and I've noticed your sister's helping you out when they can. Yeah, and, and you know, I do get uh, people help me out from time to time, and I'm so grateful, you know. It's definitely made me more of a humble person. You know, like now, I mean, I remember when I had, you know, my coach purse and my, all my shoes. And now I don't give a shit about any of that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because I've lost everything. Yeah, so everything you threw all your shit in the trash. I remember trash, driving yeah. by and it was and, raining and for a few days. And then the thought stole my jewelry and my Victoria Urban Secret. Decay makeup yeah. and my perfume. And, yeah. you know, now I drove by the that house shit and matters it, to me. Yeah, her shit was in the driveway just like rotting in the rain and it was ruined. It was too late to even get it. You know, it wasn't even... You know, we don't even know when he put it out there. Yeah, so this... And then he wouldn't even divorce me. Mm -hmm. Didn't even have... Didn't even have a plan of divorcing me. I'm still legally married to this son of a bitch. Yeah. You know, and that should have been his first step, because I'm sure he's going to try to say you were a bad mother or bullshit, trying well, to get see, your kids back. Well, see, that goes into the whole... This plan was hatched two weeks ahead of time. Like, this was a hatched plan. Yeah, like, it was... That's it, how devious there, this shit it, it wasn't even... It wasn't even 30 days. I mean, I guarantee you, because I knew the girl in... It was just, yeah, it, it wasn't even 30 days. I mean, it's not hard to tell in a situation, in a work environment, what's going on and how it's going down. It's just, it wasn't even 30 days that this and plan was And let me hatched. explain the dynamic of mine and, and Mookie's relationship. Oh, he another thing, he killed somebody's kitten. Remember that? Yeah, he did. And he came, he wants to take care of five kids. He, like, um, my, my husband would come home as soon as he got off work. I've never had to call a jail or a bar or a hospital trying to figure out where my man is. You know, he would come straight home from work. He wouldn't go out without me. Um, he would tell me he loved me. He would never leave me. And I remember the pictures of the donuts and the coffee he yeah, would bring he you. Would, I mean, he doted on me like I really felt like, you know, that this was my forever. Like I had no idea that he was, you know, planning this shit. I mean, six, it was what, not six weeks, six months, sometime before this all happened. He bought me a brand new wedding ring set to replace my old set with like a bigger diamond. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not. And he even ha he has my name tattooed on him. So yeah, if I'm he such does. a horrible fucking. He won't wife tell nobody about that tattoo person, either. Like I was completely just shocked. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 finding out all of this, like I'm glad that I was hospitalized when I found all this out. Because that broke me. I remember them having to come sedate me when he put the thought on the phone. And she told me she's fucked my man seven times in my bed and my children are in that house. I was banging the phone against the wall. They literally had to come. And when I found out that, that CPS um, took the kids away from him, they had to come sedate me that day. Because I lost my mind. Yeah. But I mean, and for somebody to understand this story, they would have to know Mookie. And Mookie is, a, is like a 12-year-old kid. In a 30 year old's body, he really is. I mean, I, I've known him for several years now, and it's just. I remember times he would just leave work after, you know, after he, this, all this went down. I remember there was one time I left the gym at like 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, and he had just took off and left work, you know, and left everybody hanging, and I had to go, you know, relieve. Bail him out. Yeah. You know, and, and there was one time when he took off halfway across the country to Montana. Yeah, it was just uh, some, some strangers they was he's gonna, never met. He took a knife with him and said it was, he was going to start his own restaurant and they were going to build their own business. And he had a he had some sort of freaking construction business they were going to do. And they, they had all these plans. And he got there. It was a camper trailer in the middle of Montana. In the with no of, electricity. No electricity. And so a bunch of, well, you know, and got worried about that. And I, you know, sent him $300 to get back on. You bailed half, him out. Halfway back, he figured out where the money had came from. He's like, who the f why would he... Dude, you were in a dangerous situation. You did something stupid. Get back here. Right, you still and have I a job. Still and I and I and I and I secured his job for him. I talked to the boss and said, "Listen, he's coming back down here." You know, but and he still stabbed both of us in the back. Yeah, after that. Yeah, he still treats me like shit. It's like, you know, and and I don't want to get back with him at all. Period. It's done. It's over. I'm not in love with this man anymore. Like there is no, like. Yeah coming back from this but i figured that we'd be at a point where we should be good friends 
Yeah, and that's not know? happened either. You know, there's no. been a few times y'all went out to eat and stuff, and it's just I thought y'all could at least you know have some communication because if I was working on, on somebody with with my kids, it's I would called try, adulting, and he doesn't. I would know try how to be have constant communication with that person in order to get my kids back right it's like i told him not too long ago like one day our kids are going to find out how hard i struggled and they're going to want to know why daddy didn't help yeah the kids are going to turn 18 one day you can't stop that from happening you know but i wish that i wish you know and that's part of, and like i said somebody's going to try to spin it your 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 husband left you for a 23 year old old thought and when i first met her i thought she was a lesbian actually Nothing she against now that. Did look a little yeah, she look kind of, yeah, she kind of did. But in, in the end, for anybody to have to really understand the story, you would have to know Mookie. I mean, he ta- he goes around talking about killing people in Old Mexico, and he just, oh, you just have to. He's just very immature. He very he is, and you would have to really like he got fired from a job for fighting farting on girls or something. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're thirty something years old and you have a job, and he was a job. This is a manager job he had. Yeah, he was making yeah. good money. And he got fired because he was farting on female associates. And this is why I couldn't go and put myself in the hospital at that time when I first started having these horrible symptoms the of job PTSD. Security. Because he had to switch to a new job, then lost that job. There's your there's your possum coming up the porch. Oh my god. <laughs> But also, you know, another thing is, is, is and, that, and, that, and this goes to you, Jamie, is like, those times when y'all had no money and you pulled it out of your ass and you came out with money to pay bills and rent and he wasn't working. I've had you my know, side hustles. There, there, there's been side hustles where, you know, she will bang out. She will figure out how to make some money on the side. She will figure out how to come up with something. But I was a loyal fucking wife to like, I, like, Jamie has, like, my electric bill. I had a problem with them not sending my bill. She has my stuff now. Wherever there's an issue, she's calling them up and making sure my lights don't get cut off because she has a way of talking to these people and she knows how to work the system. You know, I had the money to pay the bill, just maybe a little bit late, you know. But there was a problem there one time where my bill wasn't even coming in the mail and they were shutting off my uh, electric because I didn't know I had a cutoff notice. Right. You know, so I have to let you handle that for me, you know, because I keep, you know, with my kids and like next week we've got orientation, school's about right. to start back, you know, and so. You know, you and I, you showed me, you know, you're always there, you're on top of crap, like the bills or something like that. And, he, and, and you've helped me, and actually, you helped me get disability for my child. Yeah. Is that what I, he has disability? Yeah. And that's only because Jamie, Jamie has changed my life in the extent where she did all the paperwork, and then all I had to do was go to doctor's appointments and interviews with the Social Security office, and it was not like two to three months into it. And I, and I'd worked on this for like two or three years, and she did it in two or three months. And even the Social Security office was like, I am, like, impressed who filled out this paperwork. Yeah. Because you had so much. Because I saved all my paperwork from the schools and every doctor he had I been to. Because I crossed every T and dotted every I because I had been through the process before. Yeah, because you have two kids with autism. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, Jamie's not just some, you know, buddy sitting here on YouTube talking smack and pulling crap out of her ass. You know, and I hate right. for somebody of your stature to, to be, like I said... They come and say your kids have been taken away and use that against you, and that's not even the case. Because you're so They don't realize how hurtful that they, is. It'd be one thing if I was a junkie mom or something like that, but well, to know I think the that's situation... What they, that's of, what, I think that's what they want to put the image out. That's yeah. what they want to see. They want to see if somebody is junkie. And there's been a few people I've seen on YouTube that I'm pretty sure are junkies. And if they don't have their kids, I know why. And I and I won't come out and say that to that person. It's just ten times more hurtful to me because I didn't have any control of that situation because I was in yeah, the hospital. Yeah, that did not involve anything to do with and, you. And it was so hard because, like, that was one of my worst fears was my kids getting out of the house. You know, I had locks on doors. I had baby gates. I had a oh, whole yeah. system. To where that would not happen. And as soon as he gets me out of that house, it's like, it's like a free-for-all in there. Yeah. And and it just, I, I, I cry about it. If something would have happened to one of my children, I, I mean. Because the neighborhood be, y'all lived in was not the greatest neighborhood in the world. I mean, it, 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 I mean, you might as well say you were the only white I people in the, in the ghetto. I lived in the ghetto. Yeah, you were in the ghetto. Like, yeah. But if my husband wouldn't have quit losing these jobs for farting on people, we probably wouldn't have had to live in the ghetto. Yeah. You know, because I a did live where, in, a, in a condo in I mean, Orange Beach. If I, yeah, if I was driving down that street right now and a cop seen me, he pulled me over for being white. And I'd be, you know, He'd potentially be thinking you're dr- buying crack. Yeah, he would be thinking I was buying crack. Or looking for a prostitute. Yeah. 
So, you know, I know the I know the neighborhood. We all know the neighborhood here in town. We know to stay away from that motherfucking area. And part of one of the disorders I have, like sleep is very important. And when I'm not getting sleep, it um, really brings out my symptoms. Oh, like, and didn't greatly. you say at one time when y'all first moved the house, the DA had raided the house? Because it was It was the some, weirdest shit. Like, somebody, I guess, had tried to send drugs through the mail? Well, that's what they do. They find an empty house, and they'll, and they'll send them to the mail to a, to a house that's not... And they know nobody's there. But yeah, if you had well, just I moved didn't in. know that. I was just thinking, like, is the person that lived here going to come look for their drugs? <laughs> or, you know, I was yeah. calling the police, like, what happened? you got to tell me because I'm scared to death. Like, I had no idea. And that idea. didn't help your PTSD no. either. The DEA showing up at your house and knocking on the door and, you know, putting everybody in handcuffs and taking away the mail because someone, it you know. Was, it was scary. It's even dangerous today accepting packages at your own home. It really is, you know. Because I think I've read that on the when I was on the tour browse on the deep dark web. I have seen where, you know, they they go around neighborhoods and they find houses that are empty. Yeah. And that's where they'll send their packages to. You know, they'll, they'll case the whole neighborhood, you know, but that's not the, I, I would, I think it was somebody used to live there because that neighborhood is not like an, I a think so too because the they mailman use came a, up and there was like two people behind him and as soon as, um, reached your hand out to, to get the package, those, I guess they were undercover police. Yeah. Were right on top of it. And yeah. You know, my husband was like, wait, that's not my name. And he went to hand it back. And that's when they were like, okay, well, we're glad you didn't accept it because there's drugs in here. And um, at that time, I do a lot of like, I would do product reviews for Amazon and make a little bit of side money. So we'd accept packages all the time and not Oh, yeah, because you got this little freebie it. thing and, and, I, and you use my mailing address and I'd get a lot yes, of freebies and in the mail. Like, you know, it wouldn't be, if I would have answered the door, I would have just grabbed the package and just threw it <laughs> on the couch and been like, I'll get to it later. Yeah. You know, and, and it just was like, I was so scared. I mean, I was calling the police demanding to know what's going on and, and they wouldn't tell me because it was... You know the type it's a of multi, case it was. It's probably and, a multi-agency task force too. It it probably was the and FDLE for, and all of them too. For like a month later, I would be shaking at night when my husband go, would go to work, thinking somebody's going to come back looking for this dope, you know. And it would scare me to death. I mean, I would literally pace around my house in the middle of the night, holding a loaded gun, waiting for somebody to come try to hurt me and my children. That's how paranoid and delusional I was well, getting. Well, probably from the main the part you're protecting sleep. your children, you know. That's how I and, felt. And, I, and I've seen times when you've lost some sleep, and it's not, you know, it's not easy. It's not. And it's not. I'm like, you need to go sleep. You need to go. Do you want to? You want me to take you to get a cup of coffee and chill out with me for a minute so you relax and maybe go to sleep? Yeah. You know, there have been times where you know you haven't gotten no sleep, and I've worried about you. Yeah, because that's one of my hugest triggers is not sleeping right. Yep. And people on the well, I don't know. It just bothers me. It's just such a hurtful thing for somebody to say to me. It'd be one thing, like I said, if I was a junkie mom and knew I had well, fucked up Well, they don't know your life. real life. Your, your life is different than most people. You know, you've been through so much, and to know this, and to deal with Mookie on top of that, of which you already had to deal with. And still dealing with. Yeah. You know, it's just such a hurtful Cause thing. Because that might, I, I got to the point where I had to record him and, and play it for her what he was saying, and some of the stuff he'll come tell you is, like, complete bullshit. Yeah. You know, horrible. like... Like the day, t like talking about killing people, and I'm like, <laughs> that's why we call him Mookie. Yeah, y'all ever watch another Forty Eight Hours? Is every no the first Forty Eight? First Forty Eight is what? It, yeah, that's what. It is. Every, all the <laughs> all the killers they always catch is some guy named Mookie or, or what? Little nephew, little nephew or something. <laughs> yeah. So we called him Mookie, and we actually, <laughs> I actually made a, a wanted poster. And he thought he was proud of that thing. Oh, he yeah, he shared it. He's like, and Matt, I killed And he really, seriously, he's told so many people this lie. And everybody laughs behind his back about it that he killed somebody in Old Mexico. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, because if you meet him, you know he's not a cold-blooded killer. And if you kill somebody, and I've made this story, you just don't go. I Like, I've not known people from Vietnam and World War II that have actually killed people. That when you ask them about that, and they shut down. They That's just not something you just, you know... That pass the ketchup. Oh, I killed somebody one time. You know, it's right. like, the pass the nice You just don't, you just don't come out there. You get to a certain thing. You, your life changes. You're not the same person. You will never be the same person after taking another human life. I know that for a fact. 
you know, because I've, I've met plenty of men in the military that have actually had to I do it. I could never do that. And I, I don't even like... Well, you could say that, but I mean, if somebody was messing with your kids and oh, you yeah. had... Oh, yeah. Well, had if to, I had to, yeah. And you had I mean, to... of course. I'm just... I'm such an empathetic person that I don't even really like to hurt people. I mean, when you see me going at people in chats, I'm never saying stuff that could, like, hurt them in their real life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, she is an empath, and it, and it affects some things sometimes, because sometimes I think she's too friendly sometimes and tries to make somebody, you know, make friends with everybody, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, and I, was, yeah. and I get upset, you know, and I'm like, just sometimes it's just best to leave people alone and say, when they're wanting attention. It's, there's a few individuals I've noticed. Well, I try to, when I do go at people, I try to fight with facts. Like, I'm not going to call you a fat slob or a chomo. Yeah, it normally or, doesn't go that way. It tries to start yeah. out with facts with you, but then they start with that bullshit, and you start back with that bullshit. You know, and, and, I, and yeah, I've seen Yeah, because I it. love when people say I call them a cunt. I don't like that word. I'll usually say, see you next Tuesday. Like, I, that's just not in my, as Cal Pope would say, lexicon. I, it's just not one of my words, right. you know? I love the Cal Pope lexicon. Right, right. I need to make another Hitler video for him victim card that's in my well when time. i did that when i'm doing the hitler videos like i told him i was listening to cal pope the whole time i was listening to one of his live streams mm -hmm. and he would say things in it and i had to write the script first before mm -hmm. i did it so that's why his lexicon was so on in that video it's right. if i'm doing a video on you like that i'm going to listen to what you're saying like if i was going to do something with grizz i'd go pull up his live stream from today and listen to the whole two hours and so, write the script as i'm going because he uses the same lexicon over and over too Get on your red and white tricycle and scooby do tricycle right away and things like right. that. Right, and I think, you know what's hard for me is, like, giving certain people a pass when they do certain things, like, um, the e-begging or the, the crazy card, I don't like pulling that one, or the fake suicides. Really fucking bother. Or anybody saying anything to anybody else about committing suicide. It really affects me deeply yeah. it affects me when somebody real does it and i told you this before when troll I, I i get you get troll comments i get troll comments and i hate playing the game of the pagan witch worship and tarot cards trying to figure out and crystal balls trying to figure out who a damn troll is yeah because it's, it's useless it really is i've heard so many people like i know who that troll is because they hate this one person I don't think it's that person. I think it's yeah. always a third party that you don't know who it is. It's trying to start shit, so there'll be more drama. Stir shit up. So, and I've had troll comments say some crazy shit, and so has Jamie. So and we don't me. always screenshot those because they're troll comments. They're troll comments, you know what I'm saying? And it hurts me more when I see real people saying the shit. It's not the trolls. The trolls don't bother me. Because that's just, I can take or leave the trolls. I know it's somebody who's trying to, and like there was a comment that was left on one of my videos the other day about the babysitting deal. And, and like I tried to ex explain to you because you was upset about that one point. And I was like, no, that's what the troll wants you to think. They want you yeah. to be upset about this one thing. But the whole point is the information contained in the, in the, in the, in the, and this is a weird troll comment and it has some weird information. Yeah. It did. And I was like, it's the information quick. Don't get emotionally entangled in the, 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 the part where they try to throw shade on you. You know, let's look at the information that is, that's being said in it. And sometimes that's what a troll wants is an emotional reaction from you. I just don't like my personal, like, if, if you're like Linda and you're pretending you're good friends with me and that you care about me, I don't like my personal shit getting put on YouTube because I don't put it out there. Now, yeah. if I were to put all my business on YouTube... And that's what YouTube, this, this is what this podcast or video is about because it's probably just, I'm, I'm going to use the audio. Um, but... If you're going to put personal fans out there, we're going to come out here with the real stuff and tell you the real story and what you really don't realize is going on because it's really not. It, I mean, somebody can say one thing. I think a lot of people would be shocked to find out how hard I have it and the struggles that I have that I'm not perfect. Yeah, nobody would know, nobody would realize what our real life is like. Yeah, Most of I don't realize, try to act like I'm better than anybody else. If anybody had to deal with what we really had to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, it would, yeah, I don't think people could function. I know, and, and I know some it's of the a shit I've been through in my you, life too. Just to be friends with me and have to deal with some of my issues, you know, like you said, I mean, because when you got a full plate and I got a full plate, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to, you know, to have empath together in time. And you know, sometimes you, I get on a track and I'm like, I'm selfish yeah. on a track sometimes, and I want you to listen. And, and I'm probably you're the already, least selfish. And you're, ever. and you're already <laughs> on another track, you know, and you got this shit going on. You go, oh, here comes Jeff, you know, with his selfish little crap. 
you know, and it happens. Well, I happens. think it's because I'm not very selfish, so it gets on my fucking nerves. I don't nerves. mean to be selfish. I don't mean to be, and, and I'm admitting there are times that, you know, I've probably been narcissistic and I've probably been selfish. You know, I admit that, you know. Thank you. So, and, I, and there's been a lot of things I've said I shouldn't have said. But also in a relationship, it's a 50-50 street. So when, when Mookie tells me some bullshit, you know, I don't believe everything he says, but it's also a 50-50 street. You yeah. can't take a relationship that has been failed and say, it's just one person's fault. And I'm, I'm not saying any relationship has failed or not failed or, or right. succeeded. Or even my, my baby mama. I can't sit here and go, oh, she, it's all her fault. That's the reason we're not together. No, I'm just as much fault as she is because it's a 50-50 street. With friendships, relationships, romantic, you know, pansexual, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It doesn't matter what relationship right. we're talking about. Every relationship is a 50-50 street. I'm not going to sit here and dog Mookie, you know what I'm saying? Because I've seen you sometimes too, and we were having a discussion a little bit ago. Where, you know, you go kind of hard sometimes, and you get snarky sometimes. I do. You know, I, I, I can we'll be driving things. around, and she'll I mean, be, I've had, you know, I've had and a she'll gun shot in my head three different times. I mean, it wasn't because I was a meek little mouse that sat there and was quiet. I mean, I, I'm a button pusher. Yeah, and if you knew her sisters and their family, I mean, they can be Ruthless. Pretty, yeah, they are. I mean, her sister plays like this freaking fairy goddess and she's the greatest thing that ever happened to people and so i have a twin sister yeah and <laughs> but she's not and and i and i and there's been a few people i've told that i know that's not the real person that's not really who she is y'all yeah, y'all are feeding into fake, her fake fake, fake bullshit because she she's a she's high up in the company where i work you know she has to play that role where she's you know you know what i think i want people to take from this i i want people to take from this just think before you speak sometimes like you you don't you know i know we all seem like characters on youtube but they're real people they're so quick to go to images problems. they go to quick to what they want to believe and i've said this so many times so many people want to believe what they want to believe and they go straight to that they will go straight and drink that kool-aid and that's what and they don't think about it you know instead of okay let me think about this a little bit before i go at this person and be like okay you know and you know, maybe it's not. And like there was a there was a thing the other day where we found a Facebook page, and we were like, and I was like, look what I found. And then I really looked into it, and I said, wait, somebody wants us to find this Facebook mm -hmm. page. And when you start looking at the evidence and really thinking about it, you don't go jump. Yeah, I could have screenshotted this Facebook page and went straight out to YouTube. Look what the fuck I found, and yada yada yada. Like the mystery man troll that I let out with, with you and M E R was on the phone mm -hmm. with me when I did it. We all we did, all it, did together. it together. And and I was looking into it and. I, we didn't straight go into that. We had to make sure our facts were, were are in line and everything was in a row. You didn't want to come out bullshit. Yeah, because you have to be careful with that bullshit. Well, I feel like two years ago, because I, I can hear what the comments are going to be like, Jamie, you're so ugly, your man left you. Or you are such a horrible wife, your man left you. But you don't know, two years ago... But he's ago, not a man. He, he no. wasn't a man. He's not. But two years ago, hearing those kind of comments could have broke me down enough... So maybe it would have made me suicidal. Yeah. You know, and now that it's been a few years and I've had time with therapy and medications and I am stronger now, I can deal with it. But there's some things that are just so hurtful to people, you know, and, yeah. and, and that's one of them. Well, they can say that all they want to, but I'm going to tell them right now, you don't know Mookie. You don't know. They don't. It was, it's a, it, it, this is, you know, he was lucky to even be married to Jamie in the first place. Right. He ch he. <laughs> proposed many times he chased me so long yeah in order for y'all to know the real story y'all you would really have to mook you and i would say this again he's like a 12 year old kid he's a man goes around farting on females at work as a yeah. joke you know oh your socks untied that little joke you know he always fuck with people and it's always a 12 he's like a middle school kid i mean i well that's why all of his friends now are like 20 something just got out of high school kids. I mean, he doesn't hang out with anybody his own age. No, and he keeps posting pictures of him playing pool at a bar, but he wants his kids back and stuff like that. Yeah, can't this, help me with my for, medication. For them to understand your, can... your situation, they ha would have to know Mookie. And actually, he's done you a favor in, in all actuality in the fact of, you know, ending the relationship because, right. you know, I, if it didn't happen now, you'd hate for it to happen later on and, and you were in a deeper you know, or, or in a different way. But for for our audience and our fans and the Jamie fans, the Fire Girl fans, 
would have to understand, and I and I and I uh, and I implore y'all to to think about this for a second. Y'all don't know Mookie. If y'all uh, knew Mookie, if y'all even took one look at Mookie and be like. You know, I, I'm surprised. You know, just knowing him, just some first glance and seeing him as a as a person to be some married to someone as beautiful as you, is like, Thank I you. would never guess that. I mean, I would have never guessed it in a million years. You know, and when I did meet you, I was I have I was very surprised because the shade he throws on you is like horrible. I mean, he makes you sound like you're 400 pounds Job overweight. You can't get out of bed. You won't do shit. Right. No, this girl. Get, when it's time for this girl to hustle, this girl hustles. There's no way fans are fucking butts about it. There's been times when I needed something, and she did not hesitate one bit to you find know, a way. Yeah, to, do, to help to me. come through. You know, because so, I'm loyal. Yeah, and I was and always it, loyal to him, even though he fucked up a lot. Yeah, and there's you know? no way, and there's no way we this one video could, or even ten videos convey, could, can the, convey everything that's going on in our lives or what things are really like. I just wanted it to dis get rid of the whole. I wanted the Linda story because I never got it, you know. And I know, and she was embarrassed because she's like, you you were embarrassed because you were, you were taken, you were got got. Yeah, I you got got, got <laughs> basically. You know, and, and, and I'm not saying it would never happen to me where I got got, but sometimes you know. Me and her, when we worked as a team, were a lot better, you know, and... And I was embarrassed to tell you about it. I understand that, and, and, you know, and I just want to get this whole fact about your kids being taken away. It is a, is a BS story, and you still have custody of your kids. I'll reiterate that. I have read the paperwork. Every bit of paperwork she has... Yeah, I got receipts. She has full custody of her children. She just was kicked out, doesn't... She was left homeless with nothing and no money. You know, and no other option. It's like a, a a a mom who gives her baby up for adoption who has nothing and thinks somebody else can care for their kids, but they were never getting up for adoption. You know, I know it's so hard because I miss my kids. I know you do. I know you. And she cries kids... about this. You know, the other day I, I I had some extra money and and I said, go on uh, Amazon and find your kids a gift and send it to them. You know, because and that my kids day. are being well taken care of. They're in baseball. They're in Girl Scouts. You know, they're but the whole point being, you if have I never less ca lost them, custody. They Nobody's are in the best. Yeah, they are. Place. I am surprised his sister is such the the woman she is because I talked to her myself, and the man that that that's, that she's married to, you know, and the shade he has actually tried to throw on that man is yeah, fucked up. It's totally fucked up. But you have never lost custody of your kids. You still have full custody. Your sister has concurrent custody, or his sister. And I'm in and, constant communication. Yeah, so there's no nobody taking away Jamie's kids. DCF or CPS has never taken away the kids from you, ever. They had meetings with you. But you. Yeah, but, but as soon as you got out of the hospital, you, yeah. I mean, you signed them over so you, your sister-in-law could have concurrent custody. Because I couldn't let them go back with the thought in Mookie. Mm -hmm. You know, so well, they didn't, he, he didn't have anywhere at that time either. He, I can't. No, for the first, because remember they were taking my kids' check and all the money they made. Oh yeah, I remember they were getting all the kids' check, and he still owes for that. He still owes yeah. Social security for and, that, and wouldn't give me a dollar. But he's was still, stealing from he's, my child. It's been two years, and he still he spent sent money to your kids one time. Nope. He never sent that money to his sister-in-law. That, remember she called him out like two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, after I told her when he was bragging about how much he had in his bank account? He might have that time, but that's... But one time in two years, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. No Christmas cards, we've, no we, birthday cards, no Christmas gifts, We've sent him Christmas nothing. both years and bought him the Birthdays. thing. Birthdays. Yeah, we, we constantly send him something. They don't know who I am, though. You know, but I still send them stuff. Well, that's because I'm very protective. But they think it. They think it's from. I don't want to confuse and I, them. And, and, and they think it's from mommy and daddy. You know, and I told his his, her, his sister to say it's from him and her. Yeah, when don't. I did Christmas, we put because we knew that he wasn't going to send shit. Yeah, he told everybody he did. Yeah, but he didn't. So yeah. we put his name on the gifts too. Yeah, because it means something for kids to have something from mommy and daddy that they're right. still making And I, I really think that's important. And like it, it even important. took like Jamie six months to meet my kids. I'm I'm very protective about who meets my kids. I'm very and who I allow yeah, get into, because into their my lives. kids have my little girl. She's in therapy for the shit that Stephen told. Uh, yeah, because uh, Mookie said uh, you have a new mommy now, and just you bring in a gr another woman. And they had and never your kids spent... are under five, not in school. There's one that's in school, right? But the other ones aren't. No, Annabelle. She's she's in school. Um, 
But they're young school. They're elementary school. Yeah, schools. they're elementary yeah, school. And, so. you know, I have twins. I have a set of twins. So they were very confused because I had never... The only time I had ever spent a night away from my children is when I was having another baby. Oh, yeah? You know, I never... My kids never had babysitters. I never put them in daycare. You know, because when you have a child that has autism <coughs> and they're not good at, at communication... I just felt uncomfortable putting them in daycares because I want them to be able to come home and tell me, you know, what's going on if something happens. So, yeah. I mean, they, you know, they went to school and stuff, but it was just with having the amount of children that I have, it was economical for my husband to go make the money and I raised the children and I, you know, my, my son, <laughs> my oldest son, um, he is so high on the spectrum. He's like a genius, you know, he is so smart and reads so well and it just, he's such a fascinating child, but I taught my kids all these things, mm -hmm. you know, I, I studied up on, on autism and got myself able yeah. to, you know, um, get my kid communicating well. And now he is excelled. And in school, and yeah. it, it it was hard, but I mean, it was a job that I wanted to do. Yeah. Me and Jamie are always reading up on something like that, autism or some other thing, mm -hmm. you know, to do with our kids or, or our, even ourselves. You know, we 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 do that, and uh, the INJT thing, the INFJ thing, since you know the day. And um, but I, I think it's about time to end it. We're getting an hour and something minutes, hour and sixty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, an hour and 16 minutes. And this is what we normally do. We sit on the porch and talk. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, once, I told Jamie, I said, for once I want to, you know, our little conversations, let's just record them. Well, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm a little nervous about it. I'm a little hesitant because I know this is going to bring on, you know, trolling and whatever. But that's why I want somebody, some, if one person takes away from this and, and thinks before they speak or, you know, makes better decisions of how hard you you push somebody i mean yeah. people don't know all these things about me and like i said two years ago when i was in a very bad place mentally if somebody would have came at me with this kind of stuff i i probably could have become suicidal or cut myself or yeah. harmed myself yeah there have been times when your bpd or ptsd takes over and i have to call mm -hmm. so you i can straighten you out because jamie said i'm the only one that can really talk to her and straighten her out and be like listen we gotta go. That we gotta. We gotta do this, you know, and, and really get, get back to, you know, a stable ground. Because sometimes even me, when I get, you know, floating off in these weird areas, you know, I get. I got to be grounded. <laughs> we yeah. all got to be grounded somewhere. I mean, I fight like to be better, though. I yeah, mean, me too. It's been a struggle. I mean, it has not been an easy road for me. But I've been through a lot of therapy, and I want to be healthy. So I do fight to, to stay. I'm gonna say sane. I mean, even though it sounds cliche, <laughs> but. I really do. I just want to dispel the rumors about your kids getting taken away, you know, and that, and to me that, 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 you know, and to think, you know, I'd be in a relationship with a woman that did actually do some shit to get her kids taken away. It's yeah. kind of, it kind of puts both of us down, really. Right. You know, and I hate for lies to be spread and everybody, and people want to believe the lies. They do. And I hate that Mookie ever did this to me because I never imagined in a million years that I'd be one of those parents they didn't have their children. Yeah, because I had CPS call on me a while back, and I was I was shocked because I never thought that would ever happen. Well, that's because of the school, because I cussed the principal out of the school. Was the only reason they called on me. Oh, okay. You know, so, but you know, I dealt with that really easy, and they left. You know, okay. And uh, no, I don't have any left in that pack. Oh shoot! We're about to shut. Up. I got a few uh, my hand rolled ones. We're gonna have to shut this down. And like I said, I wanted to dispel the rumors, get the truth out there, and, and let our personalities reign and and be out there. I'm going to start doing more of the Fire Girl Superman show. The fuck you fuck fuckery show. Fact check files. Fact check files. <laughs> and get out of here. Fire Girl and Superman signing out.